The PV Watts calculator is a very powerful solar calculation tool. The nice thing about the PV Watts calculator is that it's very easy to use and typically a user can work through the entire platform in a few minutes. So it's a it's a good way to do a first cut at a solar project and generally get an idea of the project feasibility. So a couple of general pieces of information about the tool. This is the landing page. You start by putting the address in of the location that you would like to look at. There is a help menu here that has really good documentation on the calculator. If there is any piece of information that you're not sure of or you need more information about, this is typically the best place to get information on the calculator. There's also a place where you can send feedback here to the PV Watts development team. And then there's also a link to some of the other NRL tools and resources that are available on our website. A lot of different resources here that you can leverage. And of course, you can also connect with PV Watts on social media. So to get started with the PV Watts calculator, put in a location. We'll use Golden, Colorado, where NREL is located. What you will see when you put in a location is a map interface, and it shows where all of the solar data is for different areas nearby the address that you have entered. The solar resource around the country and around the world is very well categorized, so odds are when you put an address in, there will be a weather file within a few miles of that location. So there are several weather files to pick from. We'll choose one. It shows up here in this selected weather data for your location box. Next, we can move on to the following screen. And at any time during the workflow through PV Watts, you will see these, these arrows to move forward in the analysis or to move back. And that is how you navigate the different screens. So once you've selected resource data for the analysis, the next window is to enter system information. And the way to work through this form is to start at the top and then just work your way down. You'll notice that the inputs have these little tooltip information boxes. This links back to the help menu. And based on which of the tooltip boxes that you click, it will bring you to that part of the help menu or documentation. So this is a really good way to get additional information if you're not sure what's being asked for that particular form. Some of the boxes you enter data directly, others have drop downs. The forms will come pre-populated with default values and these default values are fairly appropriate for an average system. So if at any point you're not sure what to put into a box or you don't have the appropriate information, these defaults are good starting points. So we'll start at the top, DC size array. This is the size of the system that you would like to run an analysis for. These can range anywhere from very small systems to very large commercial or utility scale systems. The next box is a module type. What kind of panel is actually going to be used on the project, whether it's a standard panel, premium efficiency panel, or a thin film, which has a little bit lower efficiency, but is typically less expensive. To start out with, we'll just leave these defaulted. The array type describes what type of system will be implemented. And there are several options here. You can do just a fixed system where it points the same direction throughout the day. You can select a tracking system where it tracks either east to west or east to west and north to south. You can even select a system that does single axis tracking but also backtracks. If the system that you would like to run is roof mounted, then there's an option for that. The next field is system losses, and system losses refer to how much energy is lost within the system before it actually becomes useful electricity. And this is a number that's not super straightforward to calculate. Luckily, they have built in a loss calculator form that you can use to run this calculation for you and estimate losses based on various considerations. So 
in the system loss breakdown, there are fields for things like soiling, shading, snow, wiring, connections, age, you know, all of, all of these different considerations that will make the system performance less than optimal. Again, there are little tool tips. These will describe exactly what that loss breakdown is referring to. And you can always click for more information and it'll bring you back to the help documentation. If you change one of these, it'll recalculate the system losses. And then if you hit save, it puts that number into the system losses box. If you weren't sure if that was correct and you just want to go back to the default, you can click reset. It resets it to what was populated when we started. You can save and it'll go back in the box. And also you'll notice that in the main system interface here, you can also restore defaults for all of these fields. So if you click restore defaults, it'll ask you if you're sure. You can either hit OK or cancel. But it's a really nice way to make changes, see what impact it has on system performance, and then you can always come back and, and restore the defaults to what they were initially. The tilt field refers to how much the system is tilted up from horizontal. Typically, in order to maximize system production over the course of a year, you want this tilt to be somewhere around the latitude of the location, but for a lot of commercial development projects, they'll leave this tilt at 20 degrees, which is a compromise between tilting the systems super high up, increasing the wind loads, and optimizing the production out of a system. The next field is azimuth, which refers to the direction from due north that the panels are facing. So 180 degrees is due south, 90 degrees is due east, and, and 270 degrees is due west. Again, the tool tips here are a useful resource when making sure that you're putting in the right azimuth angle. If the facility was going to be tilted slightly one way or another, you can adjust that right here. So next, we'll enter the advanced parameters. And this is an optional step, and typically users will only fill this out if they have additional information about the PV system configuration. These are good assumptions for running a high-level analysis, but if there are pieces of information that we want to modify, maybe we want to see how generation changes with either a higher efficiency or a lower efficiency inverter, we can put all of that information in here. Again, tool tips off to the side but that is where you would enter information about the more advanced characteristics of the system. The final step is to enter the economics, and what this does is this helps the tool decide what kind of economic analysis should be run for this system. System type, there's an option of residential or commercial, and then there's a field here for running the average cost of electricity purchased from the utility. And this auto populates based on location. So if we put in a location in Texas, this average cost of electricity would default to a different number. And nine cents is about right for Colorado. So once we feel comfortable with all of these inputs, we'll click next arrow. That'll bring us to the results page. And the results page gives a monthly breakdown of the solar radiation, the AC energy, and the energy value, which is the AC energy times the utility cost that was entered on the last page. It also gives you a yearly total of how many kilowatt hours per year could be expected out of the system. And a couple other pieces of information down here, including some of the assumptions that went into the analysis. This is nice because you can put in comments. You can download the data either monthly or hourly. Here I downloaded the data hourly and what this gives is a very detailed breakdown of when the system is producing energy and also the different pieces of information that went into the calculation such as 
beam irradiance, ambient temperature, cell temperature, as well as DC energy and AC energy output. These results can be printed by clicking this icon here and it puts it in a nice format that fits that fits nicely on a printable page. After getting these results, there's also the option of contacting a local installer. And what this does is puts the information from the analysis into Google to research solar installers in that particular area. Another useful piece of information from this analysis is capacity factor, which tells you what percent of the time the system is operating at full capacity.